boy. I have <laughs> I have not been clean shaven in weeks. Hey everyone, Antoine Fantoin here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Gold Link album. And after that, we didn't talk. Gold Link is a DC rapper who, for about a year now, has been on an independent come up. Off the back of his last full-length album, The God Complex, came out last year. And I, I didn't really feel any type of way about it, personally. I, I saw the versatility and the potential in what Goldlink was doing. He seemed to have this kind of interesting cross-section of different hip-hop styles going on in his music. A little bit of pop rap, a bit of hip house, some conscious hip-hop, and jazz rap, too. And he's also one of these rappers that mixes singing into his flow and takes on a bit of a, an R&B flavor when he does so. So he's really a mix of a lot of different things. However, I think Gold Link on this new album over here continues to emphasize that singer side of his repertoire even more. But this is kind of the trend lately. We have rappers who simultaneously are also singers. And they hop on very bright, uppity, jazzy instrumentation. Think of people like Chance the Rapper, who I actually think Gold Link borrows from quite a bit on this album, especially on the first two tracks where the beat, also his flow, I mean, I feel like you could just plug Chance the Rapper into this track and he would do it just as well, if not a little better, because I do think Chance's voice is a bit more distinct and expressive than what Gold Link is doing a lot of the time. But Gold Link does have his own little vocal quirks. He has a bit of a rasp, a bit of a cracking in the vocal as he's rapping to show you that he's putting emotion into it, man. And on this track, Zipporah, he has a few heady lines, a few introspective lines on this song to make you know that he's relatable, but he's also giving you a little food for thought. And the way the album is set up, it seems almost as if Gold Link is going to lay out a bit of a personal story album or something, because his mom comes busting into the room and says, Get up! You gotta go to church! <sighs> but the album, very quickly, on the third track, kind of loses track of its own story, really, right on the song Dark Skin Women. And believe me, the title of this track uh, excites me. But the narrative that the two tracks had set up previously isn't really there. And then we have this really uh, cheap lyrical content going on. Girl, you're a star. The song is just really sappy and just kind of meant to uh, woo any lady listeners that might happen to be within earshot. And I have a hard time uh, believing that that is going to end up happening because the singing on this track and actually consistently throughout the whole album is uh, somewhat horrendous. I have no idea what convinced him he should sing this much on this song and the rest of this record, especially given he has some incredibly capable guest singers on some of these tracks who consistently outshine him every time someone else is allowed to sing. Maybe if the lyrics were really sharp or creative or out there, maybe if Gold Link's voice was really distinct and eclectic, I could see his cracking voice and his weak vocal lines and his strained vocals uh, getting a bit of a pass from me, but since his voice doesn't really have that many distinct characteristics, nor is his lyrical content that stellar or fantastic or poignant, I'm just kind of left not only bored by much of what's going on here lyrically, but kind of wincing at a lot of what is going on here as far as singing and just vocal performances. Like on the song Dance On Me, where the bad singing as well as the lyrics make sex actually sound gross. Gold Link doesn't have the charisma, the character, the personality, or the swagger to make lyrical content like this work. And if you want an example on this record of this working, just listen to the song Unique, where Anderson Pack appears. You might remember him from working with Dr. Dre recently, Bus Driver, when he appears and he drops lines like, is that your ass I'm holding? There is uh, a, an element of comedy to that. There is swagger there. There's personality there. It's cute. It's... Uh, alluring, the way that he sort of puts that line. Gold Link has no such charisma on this record. Um, 
Not only that, but the instrumental on this track is like a throwback to kind of this era where uh, synth funk and R&B and, and disco were kind of at a bit of a crossroads. It's just really, really homely. <laughs> but as soon as Anderson appears, it's like the instrumental becomes instantaneously clear and good and funky. I don't know what it is about the moments where Goldlink is actually singing, but the instrumental is like horrific. Dude can just not catch a break on his own record, unfortunately. The song Palm Trees delivers more flat, redundant, just completely unbearable vocal lines. I mean, unbearable to the point where I am praying for autotune. I'm praying for it. But that still would not fix the sappy lyrics. And yeah, I get it. Uh, this album is not like Ice J.J. Fish or anything. But obviously he is trolling. He is obviously trolling. This album is totally serious. I will say, though, on the second verse of this track, Goldlink's vocals do improve as he reaches into his upper register. He actually gets a little passionate, but it's at this point that the vocals really only become tolerable, not that they wow me or anything like that. As we go deeper toward the end of the album, we have songs like New Black, where we have more rapping than singing, and to me, Goldlink comes off as just so much more capable of a rapper than a singer. And with the song Spectrum, uh, not a song that I love, but it's at least a kind of cool hip house track with a fantastic Missy Elliott sample. It actually samples a bit of the track She's a Bitch, and it's uh, super catchy and, funnily enough, actually more ear-grabbing than what a lot of Goldlink is doing on here lyrically. But while he is a little monotone, his flow is on point, very speedy and impressive. The closing track on here just brings more sappy lyrics and, and nasal, just completely... Uh, off-point singing, like we can fuck like we were mama's house. It does nothing for me. There's nothing appealing about it. He's just not bringing lyrics. He's not bringing good singing. I don't see the appeal in the really boring, skeletal, faux, jazzy instrumental on this track. When this album isn't hard to listen to, it's just straight boring. Uh, there, There's maybe one single song here that I think I liked from beginning to end, probably the second track. The opener was kind of mild, though decent, and then the album just takes such a fast nosedive, and it just seems to go further and further and further downwards. I just can't really find anything nice to say about this record. I mean, consistently, uh, the song Polarized as well. I cannot stand the vocals on that track. They are awful. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, ugh, ugh, I'm sorry. I'm feeling a light to decent two on this thing. Transition. Have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? What do you think I should review next? and you're the best. And hit that like button, smash that like, and um, I hope you have a nice day. Anthony Fantano, Gold Link, forever.